You are watching a master at work. I am the Yo, 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 you know who this is. This is your boxing genius, man. From SBMboxing.com. Talk to you a little bit about this controversial fight that happened on Saturday. This past Saturday between Danny Garcia and Mauricio Herrera in Puerto Rico. I'm Puerto Rican, like you all know, by the way. In my hometown of Bayamón, Coliseo Rubén Rodríguez. You know, um, it's a shame. It's really a shame, you know. I mean, again, I am Puerto Rican. It has nothing to do with being a Puerto Rican, Danny. You know, uh, Angel. It has nothing to do with you fighting in Bayamón, Puerto Rico, my hometown. It has to do with actually looking at boxing, analyzing boxing, and taking for a fact that I believe you damn lost the fight. If anything, it could have been a draw all the way across the board. That one judge that had it 114-114, honestly, hands down, I applaud him. These other judges, 116-112, 116-112, come on, dudes, you know what I mean? It would have been better if you said split decision, a draw, 115-113, one, 115-113, the other. We would have had a draw, and maybe we could have had a rematch somewhere along the way. But no, 116-112, 116-112. Danny, honestly, Puerto Rican people out there, honestly... He lost the fucking fight. Now, some people say that Paulie had something to do with it. He might have in a way because, you know, I mean, look at it this way. I'm looking at the fight. I'm listening to the fight. I'm listening to Paulie commentating the fight along with Al Bernstein. You know, Paulie's a pretty good commentator, so is Al. But Paulie disappointed me Saturday with this... Three straight jabs to the body. He's not hitting the goddamn body, Mauricio Herrera. He's throwing three straight jabs to the chest and the stomach. To me, those are not punches. You know what I mean? I mean, honestly, I don't know whether they count or not. I don't think they count. Danny would have hit him with some good shots. Likewise, Mauricio Herrera hit him with some good shots, you know. But the kid, honestly, to me, he got robbed. It was controversial. But to me, in the long run... I have a feeling Danny says he has to abandon the 140 and go up to 147. You know what? I don't know about that, Danny. You know, I really don't know. Honestly, I really don't know about going to the 147 pounds because at the, you know, at the Walter weight, there is some potential there. That's one of the powerful divisions and no, the most popular division today where the money's at. And you got big money over there. You got Mayweather, which is Mr. Money himself. But besides Mayweather, man, that is a competitive level of boxing right there and then and the Walter Wade division, man. You go ask your boy Broner, who just came up from 135, bypassed 140, went up straight to 147, and look what happened to Marcus Madonna did to him. Go ask him a little bit about that. If you go to 147, Danny, I'm going to tell you what. You know, people are flipping around and throwing some names around like, you know, Carlos, you know. They're flipping away Adrian Broner. They're flipping numbers, names like, you know, Marcus Madonna, the same guy that's going to fight Mayweather in May. You're flipping also the commentator from Saturday Night's Fight, you know, Paulie Magellani, you know. And then, last but not least, well, excuse me, before that, they also talked about a guy by the name of Luis Collazo who gave Victor Ortiz an ass whoop in the Madison Square Garden. The kid is from Brooklyn, New York. There, yeah. Luis Collazo. So you got all these five guys that the people are talking about flip-ups for Danny to fight at 147. And honestly, to me, honestly, to me, I don't think he beat any of those guys. Maybe the fifth, the first one that I mentioned uh, what's his name, Carlos? That's about it. Now, what I would do if I was Danny, and I would do as a promoter, I would probably want a rematch with Amir Khan, you know? And maybe him and Amir Khan go at it, because I'm going to tell you, Danny, you cannot go fight him all the way. You know, you got the likes of Sean Porter. You got the likes of Devon Alexander. You know, you also got uh, Protnikov. Protnikov was beaten by Mauricio Herrera back you know, a couple of years ago, you know, you also got, you know, guys like Alvarado, 
You know, Brandon Rios was at 140, but, you know, uh, these guys are coming up in weight to 147. Then eventually you got the pound for pound king today, which I, I hate to say, but it's obviously the truth, which is Mayweather. But then you have Mr. Pacquiao. So, Danny, who are you going to fight and what are you going to do next? Now, I'm looking at it this way, man. What Golden Boy Promotions did, the way I see it, honestly, controversial. I don't think it was a controversial fight. Robbery, I don't think it was robbery. Now, I'm going to tell you my version the way I see it, man. I have a feeling that was a fixed fight, man, for, just for Danny. Boost Danny's potential and money-making business coming into the 147. 147, I just mentioned some names to you. Now, who would he fight at 147 that's going to be a good toss-up for Danny? I would probably say, let's face it, uh, Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner, Mayweather's supposed to be younger brother. You know, him and Adrian Broner could probably go at it. And honestly, to me, I have a feeling Adrian Broner will beat him also. Because, again, I don't think Danny belongs at 147. I really don't. It's hard for him to make 140. But, you know, he's going to have to come up and do some more training, better training, and possibly uh, get a better trainer. Get rid of your dad, Danny. Angel, you know, I'm sorry to say. You know, I, I think you're probably going to need a new trainer. You know, maybe a guy like... Roberto Garcia, a guy like maybe Freddie Roach before he goes out, even Virgil Hunter, you know, you're going to need a better trainer. I don't think your dad is going to train you well enough to fight those big boys, those big names in the Walter Wade division. Now, I do know, and I think they did was, like I said, Golden Boy, the lawyer, you know, he bought these two bum judges like those other two bum judges who bought, you know, uh, Ford and, uh, what's his name, Ford and uh, Ross, the car maker and the goddamn department store owners judging a fight between Bradley and Pacquiao. Come on, man. You know, they stole Pacquiao's night the same way they stole, these guys stole Herrera's night in Bayamon, Puerto Rico. Danny probably did not do his homework. He probably even took him too lightly. He probably just said, oh, this is a piece of cake. He probably went out the night before, partied harder than by him on Puerto Rico, because like I said, that's my hometown, so I know about partying in Puerto Rico. And those foxy-looking mamas, whoo, they drive you crazy. And Danny's a pretty good-looking kid, you know what I'm saying? He didn't look too good after that ass whooping Saturday, though. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, uh, the kid... The kid didn't do his homework, you know, and I don't know. I don't know what happened to you, Danny. You know, I said in the beginning, back when you started, I first said that you was a fluke. If you remember that, look, look at my videos. I said, Danny's a fluke. When he went and, bought and fought Amir Khan, I said that that was a lucky punch, and I still consider him a fluke. He went and fought Eric Morales, a legend from Puerto Rico. I was still was saying that Eric Morales is not the same guy that I knew when he was fighting Marrera. And he fought Pacquiao back in 2007, 2006. Excuse me. But now, when he went and fought Saab, a mm, little bit, but I think Saab was more or less exposed to him a little bit there. But when he fought Matista, I gave him a lot of credit. But as an analyst, I should have studied a little bit more because of the fact that Matisse is not a scholar. Matisse is not good. And Danny has an excellent chin, by the way. So Matisse hit some good shots, but Danny took them. Now, whether I said he was a fluke at that time, I said no. I gave him the credit like I gave him the credit in the last video before the fight that night, Saturday night, I said to people that I think Danny was going to put this guy away before or in on the eighth rounds. Well, guess what? That's what he lost, eight rounds of boxing to Mauricio Herrera. He didn't lock him out. He lost eight rounds of boxing to Mauricio, in my opinion. Okay? Now, 
What happens next, I don't know. But I don't think Danny could go up to 147 and fight. Honestly, I don't think so, you know. I think Danny's going to have to do something. He's Like I said, he's going to have to find a hell of a trainer to stay around at 147 or do something to stay at 140. Adrian Broner, ask him. He was a 140 man, 135, 140. He went to go fight out there, 147. He really beat Paulie. And to me, honestly, I think Paulie beat him in that fight also. But actually, you know, Madonna just did his ass in. He did AB in. He gave him an ass beating. And I think that Danny, those are the things that you're going to look forward to if you go into the 147. That night... Marisha Herrera was backing you up. You were backing up. You were backpedaling. So, you know, if you watch that fight, Danny, you will see yourself backpedaling. You became aggressive and you stood in the middle of the ring in some of the rounds, and that's when your rounds got better because you started exchanging shots with this guy. But again, you know, you were just totally backpedaling and backpedaling. And he was the aggressor. It's like he was pressuring you and you were afraid. He has, you don't let your hands go. That's the way I look at it. Your speed wasn't there. The guy was quicker than you at the jab. He was beating you to the punch. So, you know, Danny, all I can say to you is, Boricua, no Boricua. Angel, Boricua, no Boricua. I'm sorry to say, I'm an analyst of boxing. I'm not a goddamn fan of boxing. I'm not out there to judge in the beauty pageant whether this is a beauty contest or not. No, it has nothing to do with this shit. Bottom line is, you lost the fight, take it or leave it, I don't care. For you people out there, by the way, Rocky Esposito, big holler to you, guy. That was an excellent article you wrote, man, when you told me to go to that website, Boxing News. Excellent article you wrote on the fight, man. Good job. God bless you guys. Love you guys, and subscribe to spmboxing.com. Good night. Eddie.